Five. Happy to be here. Uh, my name is Michael Channing. I'm going to be your game master. Today we're playing Nerd Quiz. What is Nerd Quiz? Funny you should ask. It is trivia all about nerdly topics, science fiction, fantasy, cool things like that. Things we all know and love as nerdly nerds. Round one is on literature. Hey, literature is my favorite thing in the whole world. What I'm going to do is read you the first line of a science fiction or a fantasy novel, and I want you to name me the title of that book and the author of that book as well. Ready? Jump into it. Number one. Once there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. Number two. Shadow had done three years in prison. Number three, I suppose ultimately this will read like a diseased version of those stupid essays you're asked to write in school each fall after summer break. Number four, once upon a time we had a love affair with fire, the President of the United States thought as the match that he just struck to light his pipe flared beneath his fingers. Number five, a merry little surge of electricity piped by automatic alarm from the mood organ beside his bed awakened Rick Deckard. Round two is on superheroes. Hey, but specifically superhero parodies. This is going to be interesting. Number six, The Tick, created by Ben Edlund, is the sworn protector of what metropolitan center? Number seven, what parody of Spider-Man began life as an actual spider before being bitten by an irradiated citizen of the pun-filled larval earth? Number eight, what famous animator revamped the Mighty Mouse cartoon for television in 1987 to include risque and absurdist humor? Number nine, what existential and overly caffeinated hero wears long johns and has appeared in books, television commercials, and his own opera? Number 10. What ingredients did Professor Utonium use to create the Powerpuff Girls? Round 3 is a continuing superhero motif for on superhero sidekicks. These are the guys with the greatest, the most dangerous and underappreciated jobs ever. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you five different superhero sidekicks and I want you to name me both the sidekick himself and the superhero who hogs all the limelight from him. Number 11. Number 12. Number 13. Number 14 and number 15. And for our final round, round four, we're gonna switch it up here. We just did all the good guys, now we're gonna go evil! Evil video game bad guys. Here we are. What I'm gonna do is play the voices of five different video game villains. And I want you to listen and name that bad guy. Number 16. I am your master. Mario is your enemy. Don't let Mario get the six golden coins. Don't let Mario reach the palace. Number 17. Well done. Here come the test results. You are a horrible person. That's what it says. A horrible person. We weren't even testing for that. Number 18. <laughs> Rather than offer you the illusion of free choice, I will take the liberty of choosing for you. If and when your time comes round again. This will be a quick one. Listen carefully. Number 19. It's official. You suck. And number 20. Do you recognize this voice? You are indeed family. No other could have lived with 
supposed to be in person. Of course, it will not matter in the end. Ultimately, I will prevail, and a new era will be born unto the realms. All right, pencils down. We've come to the end of the quiz. We're going to go over the answers here. I hope you did well. Be interested to see uh, how you did. Hey, there's a comment section. This is like the internet, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. You can let me know how you did, what you think. Do go ahead and do that whenever you like. But let's go over the answers now. The answer to number one. What's that book? Oh, you probably read that as a child. Hopefully, I hope you read this as a child. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, the beginning of the Narnia Chronicles, a fantastic book. Number two was the opening line, Two American Gods by Neil Gaiman, one of my favorite writers. Great book. Uh, I've got it on my list to read again. Hope to get to that soon. Number three, uh, a bit of a cult novel. I'm not sure if you if you've heard of it or not, but if you've written it, if yeah, seriously, if you wrote that, high five, Joe. Are you listening? Yeah. Uh, but if you've read this, high five to you, man. Definitely for being a cool super fan. That was the Drive In by Joe R. Lansdale. Cool, cool book, man. Very weird. Hard to categorize that thing, but there's some stuff in there that it puts it into the science fiction category. Let's t we'll take it, man. Us nerds. We'll take you, Joe. Yeah. Number four. That was the opening line to a great book by another one of my favorite writers, Swan Song by Robert R. McCammon. Man, that is a good book. Also, another book I, I, I want to read again. It's uh, a post-apocalyptic novel uh, after a nuclear holocaust. The, the missiles hit, and, that, and that, that, that opening line sort of refers to the nuclear warfare that's about to take place. It is gruesome. The war that goes on is so just uh, mind-blowing, man. But then the things that come after it, a little bit of the stand thrown in there, a uh, little bit of like on the beach uh, as well. It's a great book, man. Fantastic. Number five. I bet you got that one just from that last name. You were probably, maybe you were a little bit lost until you heard that name. Then you knew, oh, I know what that is. That is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. Don't say Blade Runner. That's the movie. Well, we're talking books here, folks. Do androids dream of electric sheep? Round two, superhero parodies. These are kind of fun. Uh, these are fun to, to come up with. And, of course, I'm a big fan of The Tick. Love The Tick. And, of course, he is the protector of the city. That's its name. It's just called The City. Number seven, I haven't read it. I would always see these comic books uh, listed in catalogs to buy, but I never got them. Uh, but they do look really cool. Uh, that is Peter Porker, the spectacular Spider-Ham. It sounds goofy. I'm sure it is. Uh, number eight was a fantastic cartoon show in the, in the mid-80s, uh, late 80s, I guess. Oh, I loved it. Man, I've never missed an episode. It was so bizarre. Ralph Bakshi was the guy who created that. Uh, Mighty Mouse, of course, was a bit of a parody from the very beginning, but kind of on like a sappy uh, feel. You know, he was always protecting mice, woodland creatures. He was saving them from fires and things like that. But in this show, oh my god, the train went off the rails right from the start. It's weird, man. Number nine, that was too much coffee, man. Uh, he was on MTV for a short while, which I didn't see. But uh, I saw the uh, the advertisement for that show. It stuck in my head. And number 10, of course, Professor Utonium added sugar, spice, everything nice, and, of course, Chemical X. Then you get little girls who kick ass. Round three was superhero sidekicks. What I want to be, I want to be a superhero sidekick. I know I'm 38 years old and I'm too old to be a sidekick, and I don't think I can fit into my swim trunks anymore. Anyway, enough of that. Number 11, that was an updated version of Jimmy Olsen. He was the sidekick of Superman, of course. Number 12 was Speedy. He's red, and he is the sidekick of Green Arrow. Red and green are opposites. Little tidbit there. Red and green are opposites on the color wheel. Did you know that? Of course you know that. You guys are smart. Number 13 was Toro. 
sidekick of the Human Torch. He looks exactly like the Human Torch, but uh, he's smaller because he's a child. Always these superheroes endangering children. Number 14, that was Dino Mutt, the dog wonder. And he, of course, is the robotic, I think, robotic sidekick of Blue Falcon. Number 15, only appeared in one single cartoon. That was Decoy, the pig hostage. What a fantastic name. Very, very honest name, I must say. And, of course, he was the sidekick of Bat Duck, superhero uh, alter ego of Plucky Duck from the Tiny Toon cartoons. Another show I never missed when I was a kid. Uh, those were my teenage years, I think, after school. Man, those were good. Video game Bad Guys was round number four. And number 16 was the very annoying voice of Wario from that old Game Boy commercial. Number 17 was, of course, GLaDOS. Unmistakable voice. What a great bad guy she is. 18. Speaking of voices, creepy, creepy voice. That was the G-Man from Half-Life. Uh, specifically this one from Half-Life 2, but he's in all the games. And man, he's a, he's a freaky dude. Number 19 was Shao Kahn from Mortal Kombat. I never really got into that game series, but uh, my friends did, and I tried to play. I sucked at it. It's official. You suck. And number 20. Hey, this is a game I love. This was Saravok from Baldur's Gate. Right near the end, just before you do your final battle, he does his monologue. and tells you all the things that you kind of pieced together already, but if you weren't sure of it, hey, we're going to give you lots of pros just to let you know. Anyway, that was Saravok, and then you throw lots of fireballs at him, and he dies eventually. Hey, wow, cool, thanks for playing along, guys. We're, in, we're, we're, we're right here at the end, but I wanted to talk just briefly about superheroes and superhero sidekicks, things like that. When I was a kid, my role models were Spider-Man and Superman. The first movie I ever went to see in a theater was the first Superman movie, and that was my dream. I wanted to be a superhero, and you know what made you a superhero? A superhero costume. By putting on the superhero clothing, you became a superhero. That's how it works, right? Well, it, it, it certainly seemed that way to me when I was a kid. So one year, I, I wrote to Santa Claus. I wrote, Dear Santa Claus, all I want for Christmas this year is a superhero suit. Period. Signed, Michael. And I folded it up and I put that on the table Christmas Eve with some cookies, with some milk. Sure, the Santa Claus will see that, grant my wish. Christmas Day, I'm putting on a cape. I'm flying out of here, man. Later, I'm going to go save people. Didn't happen. Santa Claus brought me some toys and coloring books and stupid crap like that. But he wrote me a note. Santa Claus wrote me a note. He wrote to me, and I'm paraphrasing here because this is a long time ago. Uh, dear Michael, uh, I'm sorry to say I'm all out of super suits this year. Please accept these stupid toys as a consolation prize, something like that. Then he ate the cookies and he drank all the milk. But I looked at that and I was very disappointed. Look, because I am obviously just going to the wrong source. Santa Claus is not going to come through. Santa Claus can't even get his supply line straight. I am going straight to the aliens. So I, uh, next year I asked for a telescope and I scanned the skies looking for my true parents. <laughs> never did find them. Never did get that superhero suit. It's not fun, guys, being mortal. I'm kidding. It's absolutely a blast being humans uh, because gods are boring. They really are. Superman is boring. Batman, however, that guy is interesting because he is a human. He's, he's just like me, you know, except with billions of dollars. Uh, otherwise, we're the same, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if he can do all those cool things, well, you know what, Dad Blasted, I can too. To the Michael Cave, which is uh, a tool shed outside, and I have uh, like a socket wrench. Yeah, I'm going to do some cool stuff, guys. I'm going to build my own robotic dog sidekick. Yeah! Anyway. We've come to the end of uh, number five here, fifth episode. This 
was where I stopped in the planning stages here. I wrote all the episodes to begin with, and then I said about the process of recording and, and finding things and, and editing. And I don't feel like stopping. I absolutely love doing this. I love the thought process that goes into this. So I'm going to continue on. And with this being kind of a special moment here, what I'm going to do is thank some particular people. First of all, let's get the uh, usuals out of the way. Thank you, Nine Inch Nails, for letting me use your music. Thank you, the internet, for being super. But special thanks to three particular guys out there who have been very supportive of me. Uh, Bob, thank you very much, man, for, for, for watching all of these, for playing, and for posting your comments on YouTube. Awesome, man. I very much appreciate it. You're a good guy. Good friend. Thank you, Ian, for all the plus ones on Google. And thank you, Colin, man, uh, for, for being so supportive and vocal face-to-face. -face. Good luck there in Jersey. Have fun, man. But continue playing. And everybody else out there listening, playing, watching, thank you, guys. Uh, we're all friends now, aren't we? Yeah, we definitely are. There's no strangers among nerds. Because why? Because we're family. Anyway, thanks for playing. And uh, go out there, continue to be nerdly, and do something awesome. And we'll see you next time, very soon. Dun -dun 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 -dun.